Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial we are going to create procedural twisted curves that are running along other guide curves. So this is basically the guide curves and we have a bunch of um, twisted lines looking like this and we are going to apply them to these other curves. As usual, you can look this up on the Otforce forums. So these are our components again, the VEX script and the file itself. All right, let's start with a um, geometry container. And um, we can dive inside there and just set up a sphere. And on the sphere, we scatter some points. We don't need as many. We can start off with, let's say, eight. But we should switch the primitive type to polygon. And in order to get some normals onto those points, we should make them explicit first so they are sticking out. You can, by the way, tell here in the scatter node what kind of attributes are being used. Now let's copy some lines onto these points. First make sure the direction is running along Z and then you can just say copy two points. All right, this is working nicely, but we would like to have maybe some different alignment and also we would like to have random line lengths so you would just go on these points again and define a p scale a point scale going from 0.5 up to 1 and after having copies or having been created copies we can just um, put in some segments we don't need as many. I can just set it to 0.2 maybe and jitter them. Now when you jitter them, you will see they're kind of leaving the sphere and I want them to be or to remain attached. So what I can do is I go into the resample node and create a curve view attribute by the name P scale. And the jittering is also accepting the P scale and that way the P scale is starting with zero in the beginning which means it it's not going to be jittered at all and the further this line goes the more jittering will happen. Now of course we don't need to jitter it that extreme we can reduce this a little or play around with the effect and after that, we should resample it again just to get a smoother result. In there, we can just say I need a subdivision curve and make this fairly small. All right, this should be our guide curves. And in order to get uh, information about these curves we should create an orient along curve node which is able to create things like um, tangents you can see here an up vector or even an out vector that is going rectangularly away from these curves but we don't need all this what we want is information for um, yeah, copying or maybe applying um, other curves our twisted curves and here we could get the translation, we could get a quaternion information that is especially useful for copy nodes, for example. We can get a 3x3 three three matrix, which is there for rotations. And we can get the full information, which is a transform matrix 4x4, four four, which is holding all the information we need, such as translation and rotation. You can see it has all these 16 components now. and the um, task now is to just create a twisted a set of twisted curves and apply them to these guides. 
So let's do this by creating a tube. And this tube should be oriented along Z again. And we don't really need quads, but rather only the columns. Let's just um, make the overall radius smaller and just make the first radius rather small and the second one will remain big. And again, we can jitter this a little to make this more random. But first I want to use the resample node. But not for resampling, we will deactivate the segmentation but rather for using curve view on p scale again and jitter this using p scale so it starts from the same position but spreads out like this and we can take lots of lines but make sure to resample them because we need lots of information to actually get the twister going. So this should be fairly dense. Now, in order to twist this, we need a point warp. We dive inside there and we should give us some more room here. And as usual, we start with the position and feed this into a noise. The noise can be made quite simple, so not much roughness, very little octaves. And this is going to be used on a rotate. We are aiming at the angle, but we should put a fit range in between. That way we can control how often this will um, basically um, rotate around. And this rotation works by multiplying it with the position. So the incoming position vector is multiplied by the rotation matrix. And this again is being fed into our new position. Now in order to make this more exciting, we fit range it from minus 0.3 to positive 0.3 by yeah, let's say 50 rotations along the z-axis. So this is our twister and um, yeah, this should work. This is the identity matrix that is being transformed by our noise function. Great, let's go out and just give it a random color. We could use this on primitives, so it's a little easier to um, set this apart. We can also just use a color node, which may be a little bit simpler, and set this to primitive and random. It's about the same. Now, um, there's one thing we should take into consideration is we have several guide curves and we want individual twists on each of those. So what we should do right after having created the tube is to create copies. So you would take the usual, the, just the normal copy and transform node and create as many copies as we have guide curves. Make sure you have an H script and then you can just say how many prims are there by using the N prims expression and you would refer to the guides null object. So you can click on total number and you'll see yes, we have eight of them. So now we get a lot more of these twists all on top of each other. And I think we're now ready to go. You would just say we need another null object and call this twists. And now we want to apply those. So you would use an attribute wrangle and just feed in both. And I don't know, what would we call this? 
apply transformation. So this works um, like that. We want to use the bounding box information. So basically we start here with zero and go all the way up to one. So let's just type vector BB is equal to relative bounding box zero V at P. And um, all we need from this is the U component, uh, excuse me, the Z component. So what we can do, just make sure this is a capital P. Um, all we need is the Z. So we say float U would be BBZ. And I want it to run the other way around. So we say 1.0 minus BBZ. So it should start here with zero. And the U component is what we are going to use to ask along these guide curves. So we can say what's the specific transformation matrix right here or right there. And this will make sure our twisted curves are following along these curves nicely. But first of all, we want to make sure that these different twisting curves are applied to their specific targets. So we need to find out where they're coming from. We need their copy number. And this works by going to the primitive function. And although we are running this in point mode, we can ask for primitive information as well with this. So just say copy num. That's the attribute you'll find in the primitive manager. Let's have a look here. It should be, and you go to the copy node and say copy num. You should find this. And this is what we are referring to. So we can just say, give me the copy number by um, just saying, the primitive number at primnum and now it should know the copy number. And all we need to do now is to create our own matrix. I call this X form for transform. And with the prim UV function, we can actually crawl along those guide curves and ask for the transformation matrix. So we have to set this to the second stream, which is the guide curve stream. And then all we need to ask for is the transform attribute based on the primitive number, which is copy. And U is the information. So let's do this one by one. We have those eight guide curves and this function uh, or this component is saying, give me the correct guide curve. And this is the position along the curve. Okay, let's see how this works. So we just multiply the position again by the transformation matrix. And all of a sudden, all those twists are applied to the curves, but you see it looks a little weird because there's one thing we didn't uh, consider yet. We first of all have to flatten this twister. Otherwise, there's an offset. So let's just deactivate this for now. And just say v at p dot z will be set to zero. Now it should look totally flat like a disk. And only after that, we can apply the transformation. And that way, this crawls nicely along the curves. To make this look a little more convincing, we can increase the amount of twists. At the same time, we should give it a bit more definition because this is already starting to look a little low in resolution. So you would go to the second resample node and make this a bit more detailed. And also, I think it looks a little too large. So you would just transform this and just shrink them in. So that way they should be able to follow the curve. 
and as everything is procedural you can also shrink the starting sphere so they are a bit nicely together you can play around with the jittering and it should always work. Alright, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.